Hello, I'm Odin, and today I'm gonna make a prop from the video game, Doom. A few years ago, I made the BFG for Smosh, but today I'm gonna make the Super Shotgun from Doom Eternal. To get the measurements and shapes, I bought a 3D model of the weapon from Etsy and created a set of outlines to work from. I made lots of cross sections from different angles and printed everything at full scale. I can just measure the drawings. I was surprised that a one and a quarter inch PVC pipe was an almost exact fit for the barrel. I cut strips of three millimeter Sintra plastic and glued them to one pipe and then glued that to the other, making a double barrel PVC pipe. I add a support for a center rail. I suppose I could have cut this as one piece, I just didn't measure it all out and plan ahead. And then I glue on the flat center rail and add the two sides. Now this is all Sintra plastic. It's a foamed PVC sheet. It uses the same glue as PVC pipe. There are a couple of side rails. To glue them on, I use some blue foam for support and then my one, two, three blocks to keep them square. I can add the iron sight and other barrel details and these are all still made from Sintra. I add the raised panels that go on the side. I cut a thin sheet of styrene plastic. PVC cement is not the best glue for styrene and on occasion I needed to add some weld on four in places that came loose. With the glue set, I cut down the PVC pipes the correct length. I needed to trim both ends, and I knew this when I started. All the plastic was cut to accommodate for that. But by cutting them now, all the parts are the same length. I add the delicate thin strips to the side rails. These are also styrene plastic. I build up the void between the barrels with two layers of styrene. I only need to do the very front. Just behind this, the fore end of the stock will be added. My plan is to wrap the underside with HD foam, and I can easily get a smooth, rounded shape this way. Before I added contact cement to the plastic pipe, I scratched it up with some 60 grit sandpaper. Contact cement will work on smooth plastic, but it'll still peel up. This needs to be built, and I need to make it be pretty big that it can hold this weight, because you know people are just gonna hold it. So I need to take the thick stuff and make it with a tang that I can glue in here, which I'll just cut the foam to get around it. The contact cement has dried enough to stick, so I wrap the bottom of the barrel with six millimeter HD foam. I tuck it in behind the side rails and cut off the excess. And then I add a second layer of two millimeter foam. 60 grit sandpaper will scratch up the end of the barrels and I can cover the end with some strong back foam. The self-adhesive foam sticks great to dried contact cement. I place some small two millimeter trim on top of the barrel and add the six millimeter rails to the bottom and more two millimeter strip pieces go on top. There's actually quite a lot of these little strip pieces and panels all over the place. I may not call them all out. I trace the profile of the grip and trigger guard onto some six millimeter Sintra plastic, which I can easily cut on my bandsaw. I cut the profile pattern down, removed the trigger, and just had the trigger guard left. I traced two trigger guards onto some three millimeter Sintra, and then I traced a set of grips onto some one inch thick pink insulation foam. The pink insulation foam is very easy to cut with my scroll saw, and I'm using a spiral cut blade to do this, which lets me cut in any direction. I attach my shop vac to the back of the saw for dust collection. This really helps cut down on the mess. Then I use a straight cut blade for the Sintra. They're a bit stronger than the spiral cut. I thought it would work better on this plastic, although it probably doesn't matter. To cut out the inside of the guards, I drill a hole in the center where I want to cut out, and then I run the top of the blade through the hole and reset the saw. Then I can cut out the inside of a ring shape. You'll need to take the blade off again to remove the part, of course. I cut the main piece the same way, but I made sure to leave the outline of the trigger only on this part. Using a sanding sponge, I curve the area on the grip that will be right above the trigger. This spot is gonna be much harder to do after it's glued together. 60 grit sandpaper on the plastic again, and then lightly on the pink foam. But I'm not gonna use contact cement. I mix up some five minute epoxy. Contact cement and most spray paints will dissolve this foam and styrofoam, which would be bad. But epoxies won't melt this foam. I make sure the sides are right and add some weight to keep the stuff together while the epoxy sets. Once the epoxy's finished, I use rasps and sandpaper and I get the shape of the rest of the grip checking that it fits by hand as I go. The dimensions are correct for the model. Doom Guy has got some big hands. 
It took a little while longer, but I got the grip down to a size that actually fit. I've now got a coat of Flex Bond that I painted onto it and it's drawing. That will give me a barrier, I hope, so I can actually use contact cement to attach more foam and pieces to it to get the rest of the handle shape that I need. If this isn't a good enough barrier, I'll have to deal with that when it comes. I start to make the fore end of the stock. These black parts are the center shapes of the smallest part. And I wrap them with some six millimeter HD foam and then add another layer of six millimeter to the front. I use my bandsaw and cut an angle down the front edge. And I cut channels to fit over the six millimeter rails. <laughs> I make the full fore end the same way, just longer. I use my cross sections to determine the size of the center shapes and I add a second layer of two millimeter foam. There is a decorative bit that goes in the end. Because of the length, the sides bowed out in a way I didn't like. I could just glue them in place with some effort, but I decided to glue in little strips of wood. This will pull the sides back into place. And before I can glue on the fore end, I need to attach the grip. The flex bond worked. I'm able to uh, glue foam, which is good. So what I need to do, <laughs> this looks like a saw. I line up the tang with the center of the barrels. Uh, by the way, realistically speaking, how many shotguns have full tangs? I carefully cut out a section of the HD foam and glue in the grip tang directly to the PVC pipes. Y you can't see it because of the foam. Now I wanted a long tang for this because the barrels are heavier than it typically makes stuff. This PVC pipe is just that much thicker. While the tang glue sets, I cut sections from the fore end and add contact cement for both pieces. Then stick them together. I wrap the butt of the grip with some three millimeter craft foam. I add some detail pieces later. The back of the fore end has a diagonal undercut. Of course, the wood pieces are still right there as well. Not upset I put it in there because it kept the sides straight when I needed to glue it down. I use some scrap paper to make a pattern for the mechanical parts that go in the center. I need three layers of foam, 10 millimeter and some eight millimeter, to make what looks like the hinge for the shotgun to break open. The next two layers I stick together first and then cut angles onto them using my bandsaw. And there's more little panels that go on the bottom and those big X pins that would be the hinge if the shotgun would break open. And more detailed panels for the barrel. The grip looks like it's wrapped in leather or cloth. I cut thin strips of hockey tape and wrap them over the grip. I like the cloth texture that I'm getting from this tape. I had to wrap the grip now because in the art of the game, the wraps go under the plate where the top lever would be. And I think this is supposed to be the barrel selector lever. I add some six millimeter foam for the back of the barrel and round off with a couple of triangles of eight millimeter foam. I use a rotary tool to remove the sharp corners and to smooth out the transition between the two foams. For the really fine detail panels on the sides, I cut them from poster board and glue the cutouts to the plastic with craft glue. And there's a little smaller sword that goes near the front. I build up the look for the braking mechanism in the back just from all sorts of random little pieces of foam and foam dowels. I just need to add the selector lever. One more stack of three millimeter Sintra pieces and I can start detailing the shotgun. Now there's a ton of scroll work and raised engravings on the sides of this very ornate weapon. I don't have a simple way to recreate this, so I opt for a cleaner look of panel lines. I'm carving this by hand, so I do my best to keep the lines even and clean. I do add one large symbol on the selector lever. I just lightly carve all these into the foam because I can come back and heat the foam with a heat gun, which opens up all the small cuts by shrinking the foam just a little bit. The symbol on the selector really worked well. I coat all the foam with flex bond. This is my first time working with it. I like how it coated the pink foam. My hope is to get a better metallic paint job over the EVA foam. Flex bond takes an hour or two to set, so I hang up the shotgun to give it a chance to dry. I start looking at the meat hook that is under the barrel. So these foam, these are gonna be so thin, they're gonna stick out and they're just gonna bend. And that'll be disappointing. Why don't I let them be a little bit thicker and I just do my two layers of Sintra, which would be much easier to deal with than styrene. I trace the outline of the meat hook blades to a single sheet of Sintra and then glue that on top of a second sheet. And I set this aside so the glue can cure. Then I start looking at the chain housing that the meat hook attaches to. While complicated looking, I can make this with multiple layers of solid foam and then cut the angle sides on my bandsaw. And the bottom plate also has markings. Went ahead and cut the runes the same way, so this was etched with a knife and then a heat gun. 
A couple more thin panels with some smaller details, and really, that's it for the chain housing. How much chain fits in this thing? Okay. After cutting the blades out on the bandsaw, I use a sanding drum to create a cutting edge on the outsides of the blades. Then I can trace the serrations on the inside of the blades and quickly cut them out on the bandsaw. A file would work as well, it's just gonna take a lot longer. I glue together a spacer for the blades from Sintra. I should have just cut all this as one piece, but again, I didn't plan ahead. Now they will not flex or move in any kind of weird way because I plan to use more foam for the center of them. With the plastic cloth finished, I make that housing from layers of self-adhesive foam. I look at how the two parts fit together, and I had an idea on how to attach them. Because the chain housing very securely gets attached to the bottom of the shotgun, right? So in order for the claws to remain attached to the chain housing, I'm gonna run a aluminum rod through it. I drilled a hole through the plastic and marked where I needed to drill the foam. Then I drilled the foam in my drill press. I super glued the rod into the plastic and attached the bulk housing. There are circles that need to be on the blades as well, because in the game, the bead hook can actually open up and these circles would be the hinges. I use the curve on my belt sander to make a divot for the chain housing to fit under the barrels. <laughs> and after coating the meat hook with flex bond, I spray paint everything with gray primer. Most of the shotgun is a metallic gunmetal color. Before I spray painted it, I taped off the wooden parts because acrylic paints will stick better to primer than to glossy paint. After the acrylic paint dries, I coat everything with black shoe polish. I make sure to leave streaks on the wood to be wood grain, and the polish will settle on all the cracks on the glossy paint. After the polish is thoroughly dry, I use rub and buff silver like dry brush. I really want some brilliant silver shine if I can get it. Now I never used this much rub and buff on one project, but I wanted to give it a try. I also use a little gold on the meat hook. Then I can remove a little bit of paint on the underside and use contact cement to glue the chain housing in place. Attach the meat hook and I'm calling this project finished. Most of the materials I use are available for order and can be shipped right to you. I put a list and links in the description. I'm real happy with how this turned out. I'm really happy with how well the hockey tape worked out. I really like the meat hook. I'm really happy with the shine I have on the barrels. And overall, I like the shapes that I've got that makes up the gun. The, the proportions all seem very right to me. I'm very happy with that. Paint job, not as happy. The rub and buff worked, but it didn't work quite as well as I'd like. And maybe if I have time in the future, I might try repainting it. But for right now, I'm gonna leave it here because I, I need to move on. Uh, there's one of the detail I didn't do, which I'm sure a lot of you noticed. There's a ton of more of uh, the runes that go down the side, as well as all the scroll work. There's no way I could do that with a hobby knife. Maybe if I can get a hold of some of the laser uh, cutter. We can try doing that if something this large can fit in it. If not, this is where this is going to be, and I'm okay with that because this is how Odin makes. Okay, so one thing I really want to know, if this thing is supposed to shoot out like the wrist gauntlet that Link has and grab a hold of a demon, how strong is Doom Guy's grip to hold on to just this to pull him to the demon? Well, you set it down and it doesn't sit on the meat hook. Oh, wow. The meat hook doesn't touch the ground. Oh, that's great. I want to thank Gary Garvin, Rebecca Bigno, and all of my Patreon supporters. My Patreon support is the number one thing that makes this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.